Well, took a little break to fool around with the V-Strom last week, but now let's get back to our gas tank and see if we can fill in some of these uh, small dents. Welcome to Urban Monk TV. So overall this tank is in pretty good shape. It's rust free on the inside. That's nice. But we've got a good crease in here and a good crease in here. You could um, put tape on this to blunt it so it doesn't have these sharp edges and you could run it into the tank and just press those things out if you can reach. But there's a problem with this particular tank. On this particular tank they have this lip right here of metal. It keeps the fuel from splashing when you're filling the gas tank. Uh, but it's also going to keep me from running any kind of tool up under those dents. So the only other way to get those dents out from the outside would be to uh, they make a tool where you can take little, oh, they almost look like pop rivets. They're just little pieces of uh, welding steel and um, they'll spot weld on to the dent and leave a tab and then you can pull those with the pliers and you can actually pop it out by pulling and you'd put you know maybe four or five of them in this area and just pull the dent uh, and bring it up that way but I don't have that tool these are not so deep that that would warrant my investment in that tool and as usual I'm trying to do this in my garage on a limited budget because I think that's most helpful to people so we're going to just have to fill those in with Bondo. Mm. Green tea and gasoline. So um, we got to prep this surface to bond really well with the Bondo and uh, leaving this paint here is, that's not going to be it. So we need to get rid of that paint and rough this metal up so that we get a good adhesion with the Bondo. You certainly could do this by hand too, but uh, I got the tool, so why not? Nice and easy. There's no hurry. I want to hurry a little more than that. And with these rotary tools, as I get you know, I kind of work with the end of it quite a bit as I get down in the crevices and I end up wearing away the abrasive material. You know, this will still sand on this backside here, but once this gets too bad, I'll just loosen this up and flip it around, uh, getting this edge here, it's a good abrasive edge, up to the tip again, where it's useful to me. Then once I'm done with the Dremel, which makes pretty quick work of this, I'm going to use a uh, foam sanding block. Um, this is the Harbor Freight Fine, which I would say is still probably a 300 grit or uh, 260 or something, somewhere in that range. And I'm just going to go by hand and rough this area up, getting the corner, the edge, down into the crease. And don't worry about getting you know paint around the edge. Um, the rough, rougher that paint is, uh, it's stuck very well, that paint, this is a factory paint job, and um, so they did a good job when they put this paint on. Um, you'd be hard pressed to do better, frankly, in your garage, and um, at least I'll be hard pressed to do better, let's put it that way, but get it rough. A rough surface 
if you get the microscope out and go down to a really small, small micro level here, boy, that's redundant. Um, you're actually creating a lot more surface area for that bond by doing this. So one thing you want to consider when filling a dent is you shouldn't put on a layer of body filler or Bondo that is thicker than about an eighth of an inch, eighth of an inch thick. And um, so this dent here is pretty shallow. That's hard to, there we go. It's pretty shallow. Not concerned about that one. I'm trying to show you the profile here. But on this side, you know, we're, we're a little deeper, and so I'm just, I've set this uh, caliper to an eighth of an inch. Oop. Close enough. Hey, there we go. One eighth inch. And uh, you can kind of see how, it's about how deep I'm going to go. So I'm right at the limit of what you know one layer of Bondo should be, but if your dent is deeper than this, then you're going to want to put your Bondo on in layers uh, and do it more than once. I think I'll get away with one layer here. Something to consider. So I've removed all the paint from the dent area for the most part on both sides. And I found I had a little dent here it was small, so I moved on over. I'm actually going to sand a little bit more around here. Just get down in that hole. And then um, I've got all these areas where that weather stripping was, or not weather stripping, the pin striping was. And uh, it's still a little bit of a, an edge to that. And so I'm going to go ahead and go around this whole tank. And just smooth that over so that I have you know no more lip there. I'm just feeling with my hand. Because if I paint over that it'll it'll show in the final paint job. I'm not trying to remove the paint entirely, I'm just trying to take the lip away. And this is where taking your time and being an artist rather than just a, a guy who's in a hurry. Don't be that guy. Have patience, grasshopper. So as I'm sanding along here and getting my eye really close to every area of the surface, running into little spots like this one, that if I get too close on this, it's going to go blurry on you. But what I'm looking for is this guy. And I don't want to ignore that. I sanded over it with my block but it, um, it's kind of a deep little thing and I can see that there's rust in it, so zap these things. Doesn't take much, get the rust out of there and then we'll fill that in with glazing putty. Okay, so I've spent, oh, I don't know, a good hour with this thing. Kind of going to the dark side of the tank here. And uh, now it's time to get all the dust and clean the surfaces for the Bondo. I'll show you how we do that next. Time to put the gloves back on because to get this paint off, I'm sorry, to get the dust from the paint and the rust and all of the 
sanding that we've done, we're going to go back to our old friend ketone solvent. This works pretty good for me. But again, if you're a younger person who has yet to start a family, um, I would uh, get some serious ventilation. in a while. It evaporates very fast. So you need to put some on your towels once in a while. Okay, so when you pop the cap off of this, I already loosened that. Take a screwdriver. Yeah, up top is a tube of hardener. You want to knead this tube just make sure all of the contents of this are kind of uniformly mixed because uh, it'll separate a little bit. And then in here you have your actual filler. Never put this in there. Always take some of this, put it on a tray, and add this to it on the tray. If any of this gets in there, the whole thing will cure and you're done. We're going to need something to mix on that is smooth and uh, non-porous and I'm going to use this uh, failed attempt at a tray and uh, that should work pretty good. And then the last thing you're going to need is one of these flexible um, spreaders. They have a nice sharp edge to them. They're kind of a they're more rubber than plastic almost but uh, gotta have one of those. And then the uh, filler will separate some too. I've had this in storage. By the way, you don't need a can this big. Um, I just got a pretty good deal on this one day, so I bought it. But there are smaller cans, and that's fine for a motorcycle project. But uh, stir this up. And just get it all uniform because it separates. You want good ventilation here too. It's not like paint where you gotta go crazy with it. It kind of separates almost like peanut butter. Well, natural peanut butter, if you're familiar with that. So the mixing instructions on this particular brand say to make a three inch diameter circle that's a half inch thick. I just went ahead and put two marks on here that are three inches apart just to serve as a reference. Put that much filler down. Use my spreader to put it down. I'm thinking I am roughly there. There. That'll do it. And a three inch strip of the hardener, which is about that much. And we mix this together. And I'm just going until I've got kind of a uniform pinkish, reddish hue to it. There's still spots that are gray that don't have the hardener mixed in, so I'm going to do this for a good minute. So you can feel when this is really starting to set up, and you can see when it's all a single uniform color. I'm just going to keep spreading it a little bit. All right. Feeling pretty good about this. Sorry, I'm working a little fast and not paying too much attention to uh, 
the camera work. So again, this has been wiped with our solvent. It's clean. I'm going to grab some of this. Fill that in. And uh, I am not the master with this stuff, but I just want to fill that in with material and then firmly scrape it down in there, kind of pressing it. I'm going to get some in that spot too. I'm trying to build up an amount that is, if I press too hard, I'm, I'm uh, you know, squeezing it all out of there, but at the same time, I'm trying to fill the valley. So I'll clean the putty knife, and then just kind of go like that. Take a look. I still don't feel like I've filled the valley entirely, so I'll dab some more on there. Clean my knife. And give it a swipe. Yeah, see I'm kind of drawing it out. I may have to do this in more than one layer. And then I'm going to go around the edges and just feather that. As best I can. The sander will get the rest. Trying to press it in. Be an artist. And don't don't look for perfection yet. You can always take another stab at this. Now, before my stuff sets up too much, I gotta run around and get all of the other little dents. And be careful in your hurry that you don't fill in uh, threaded holes for screws that you're going to use later for like the emblem and stuff. I'm working pretty close to that over here. Yeah, I'm already reached a point where the thickness now is working against me because uh, I'm, I'm drawing it out. Yeah. It is setting up really quickly now. I've run out of my window of opportunity with this this putty. Yeah, now it's... You can see how it's... I can cut it out now. So that's done. I will not get any further with that. So, pretty messy right now. I'll be the first to admit that I'm not great with this stuff. But it's kind of forgiving in that you can just keep putting layers on as long as you're uh, clean about everything you know I wouldn't let this sit for two weeks and then go put another layer on it because dust and things are gonna get on here uh, like here I don't know if you can see there's a bit of a lip there but I'll just sand that out uh, anyway so this is gonna need a little bit more filler because there's still just a slight valley to that to me see it. 
Uh, but the rest, you know, I just hit them real quick, those little zappy spots, and then we'll sand them smooth and they just fill that in. So we're going to allow that to cure for about 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, in the meantime, clean your tools with the uh, acetone ketone. Uh, you can just scrape it off. I just used the uh, paint stick and got most of the big thick chunks off. And then what the thin spots, uh, the acetone will take it off real, real easily. And then I just scraped my tool or my palette clean as I can. And We'll mix up another smaller batch for uh, putting a little bit more on that piece here where there's a, still a little bit of a valley. Fill it in. And just another small bit, probably half the volume here, which is still overkill, but uh, we'll get this mixed up. And it's been about 30 minutes. Another dollop on here, right over the top, and there I've really built it up high now. So I'll feather the edge, kind of removing material around the edges, but trying to leave it in the center. And I'm working quickly because I'm also making my daughter's breakfast at the same time sitting on the stove. I don't want to burn it. <laughs> so don't let the ladies in your life tell you that you can't multitask, guys. Okay, so it's time to sand these down smooth. I think I'll focus on this one uh, for purposes of the video. And I've got this fine um, sanding block. It's foam. I'm just going to start working on this using different motions. Go counterclockwise, clockwise, straight this way, straight uh, perpendicular to that. And so, what I'm trying to do is get to the point where when I run my finger across this I can't feel a lip and I can't feel it rise up above the other surface like right now it's still a little bit of a bubble it's smooth and feathered on this edge but I can feel it rise up and then when I drop down over here here I've got a just abrupt edge that's uh, you know, rough I got a dry towel here just to collect the dust. And I'll just keep going. This whole thing is just to treat a spot right there. And all the rest of this is just over the paint, so really most of this will get sanded away. spot I was really trying to fill. Maybe this one. We can get rid of that entirely. That is pretty smooth. So I'll call that done. Move on to the next one. Just take your time with this. This is part of the fun of this. I know that, I know I want to go ride this thing. And admittedly, it helps that I have another bike that runs, and if I want to go riding, I go ride that. But um, a lot, a lot of the enjoyment of this project is the project. So there's really no reason for me to be impatient. 
about how much time this takes. It's starting to clog up my block and I may have to replace it after a while. But it's still removing material. You don't want to be too aggressive. Again, this is the fine, so I'm guessing it's 200 something, maybe even 300 grit. Um, you know, you don't want to do like 60 or even 80 right out of the gate. I mean, maybe in a big area, you could do uh, 80 immediately and then uh, get fine as you go. And I may do that as the family wakes up. I might just grab my uh, orbital sander and make some noise. But finer is better. You know, you want a smooth finish. And the paint and primer will fill some. So I want to show you as I attack this larger area how with this Bondo you see the lighter spots and the darker spots. The lighter spots are the higher spots, the more raised spots and so the great thing about the color of this bondo and 3m has thought of this when they made it um, that you can see that and know where to focus your sanding efforts a little bit more and when you see that color become uniform well then you're closer to a smooth uniform finish so you know just look for the the light and dark spots okay so I have finished sanding this initial first step but I still feel oh, it's gonna be difficult for you to see I still feel like um, I've got a little bit of an indent here and a high spot here but this is metal so I can't make the high spot that's metal go away I can sand down Bondo but essentially I need to put just a little bit more material in here same on this other side. Here I feel like I've got just the slightest bit of a valley as I go through this and I've got a high spot right here that's metal so that's the edge of the um, dent. Uh, everywhere else I'm pretty good but I am feeling there's a valley to all of these areas where the pinstripe came off. So I'm going to go ahead, mix up another batch. Oh, and then one other thing. I missed a couple of uh, spots here where the paint is off. So those are definite indentations that I want to fill in. So I'm going to mix up another small batch of my Bondo and cover those. So I got the second layer on, I'm letting that cure. Uh, this is all I've got time for this weekend, guys, so I apologize for that, but uh, we'll have to move on. We'll carry on in the next episode. I don't expect to have to do um, too much work on my everyday V-Strom here, so I should be able to stay focused on the Cafe Racer project for a while. The V-Strom is running good. and. Uh, Anything I need to do, well, tires will be the next thing there, and I won't be making a video of that. So, anyways, thanks for joining me, and uh, we'll get going on this tank. I may do some sanding again, because you guys have already seen that. And uh, when we come back, um, we'll be prepping this for paint. Or I may go back to the frame. I don't know. I don't know where I'm going. We're going to get something done, forward progress. That part I do know. Always moving forward. So, thanks for watching.